How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So my dream has always been to have art in a gallery or at least on the wall of people's houses in picture frames. And so as an augmented artist, what I thought is how can I actually improve that art on the picture frame through augmentation? And so I decided to make a course about it. And in this course, we'll learn how to augment picture frames. We'll learn how to create augmented reality portal art and augmented picture frames. We will first start by creating a basic image from the internet or creating your own and then moving on to enhancing it with augmentations. This is all about creating portals to enhance your artwork with digital content and volume. And so if you want to learn more about this project and dive deep into it, check out the information at stuckonisland.com slash courses. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash Stuck on an Island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Illtopia. Here you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.illtopia.com and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. Okay, so welcome to another lovely tutorial. And this one is going to be on augmented reality portal art. And really, you could think about this as uh, AR or augmented reality picture frames. And think about these as sort of portals through the frames into the worlds that the art represents. And so as usual, this course is best for intermediate creators, those that have an understanding on how to make art and how to use the Unity game engine, maybe a little bit of AR stuff that will go down the basics. And this is really focused on uh, creating image targets. And so if you have uh, experience in 3D tools, 2D animation tools, this is great for you. Uh, if you don't have as much of a foundation, this may be a little difficult to, um, to comprehend sometimes because uh, some of the elements we may go over uh, that are introduced are probably going to be glossed over pretty quickly. Uh, but uh, if you're new to this, it, it's, this is definitely a uh, you'll be able to keep up if you understand some of the terminology essentially. And so the agenda for this course is to, one, we're going to find an image to augment, and then we're going to set up Unity, we're going to import the Vuforia Engine SDK, and then we're going to set up an augmented reality image target. And these are all sort of the basic, uh, you know, steps that you would take for every image target or AR piece that you would do in Unity anyway. And so these uh, may be a little bit of a review, but then we'll go into building a scene container with ProBuilder, and then we'll convert uh, the scene to a portal with a depth mask. And so that should be really fun. And then we'll start to build out the 3D scene a little bit more with PolyBrush, and then also uh, adding some other elements uh, to our scene from the asset store and use some techniques called kit bashing. And so the tools you'll need for this are essentially a computer, either a PC or a Mac, or uh, any equivalent. Essentially, um, you will not be able to use uh, iPads or Chromebooks for this, unfortunately. Uh, Unity doesn't support uh, Chromebooks or iPads, so you would have to use a PC, Mac, or maybe even a Linux. But we'll need to have the Unity game engine, 
obviously we'll have the Vuforia engine SDK. You'll need a picture and you could have that either printed out or on your phone. And then we'll have a webcam and this is gonna be tested on a webcam. And so that's why I'm using Vuforia for this because it allows for you to prototype and test on webcams. But uh, if you have experience with uh, using phones and devices, you um, can build it out to your iPhone or your Android phone and you could test it out then. Uh, but as long as you have a webcam, you should be good. And so the first step that we have, the first lesson is uh, finding an image to augment. And so when we're talking about AR portals and stuff, you want to figure out what image you want to augment and then uh, essentially you'll build a scene around it uh, to create that experience because AR is all about experiences. And so, uh, you know, it'll, it all started with an idea and with the tools you can essentially bring that idea to life. And that's what this is all about. So I'm here at Google Images and Google Images is probably the best place. That's the number one place that I go to for images. Uh, but I'll just look for a nature picture. So we'll just say a nature scene. And you see we have a lot of different nature scenes here. Uh, many of them that I think would actually be pretty cool. And so what I'll do is I'll actually go to this one right here. It says download free uns on Unsplash. And I, I think I like that. So what I'll do is I'll actually go through, get it from Unsplash, and I click download for free. And what it allows me to do is download it for free. So I'll just go to my things and I'll say Unsplash and I'll say, I'll rename this to AR Portal Image Art. And I'll save it. So if I go to my folder, AR Portal Image Art, I have it here and this is a good picture to use. I think, uh, I think this will work. And so an activity that you could do, if you don't want to search the internet for a picture and you actually want to create a picture yourself, you could do that. And so um, one of the things that I do as an artist, I, I think it's really great to be able to create art that people can touch and then make it come to life. And so using simple graphics editing software, uh, Photoshop, uh, all those different things. You could, you could create some amazing work and then you could really enhance it using AR. And so with that being said, go ahead and make your own image if you would like and uh, figure out what image you would like to, figure out what elements you would like to augment with it. Okay, so for me, I have a Google Drawing up. Uh, if you don't have any graphics editing software, then you could use uh, Google Drawings. It's a, it's a really easy program to use, and I like to use this for very simple illustrations. And so what I'll do is I'll say, I'll just call this AR Portal Art. I'll save it like that. And for me, I can go through and I can use shapes, and I can create um, lines and arrows and scribbles and stuff like that it makes it really easy to use. And so what I'll do is I'll just build out a little a little nature scene. And so at first, you know, I'll go ahead and add a um a sun. And I'll put the sun right there. And then I could add some more shapes. Uh maybe I'll have some clouds. And I can just copy the and paste those clouds anywhere that I want. Like that. And then maybe I want to have like a ground. I'll have all 
I'll rotate this and I'll just make it larger. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll have some trees. So I'll just actually just make a tree. So I'll make a tree by having a rectangle and then I'll essentially put a whole bunch of triangles in it. So one triangle here, and then I'll just duplicate that triangle as it goes up the rectangle like that. And what I could do with that is I could actually just group it. So I could right click and it allows me to group. So now when I click it, it makes one and I'll be able to duplicate that. So copy and then paste. Paste, paste, and paste. And I'll paste it again like that. And so lastly, I kind of want to make the line width a little bit bigger so I can uh, just give it a little bit more uh, weight to it. And so I'll just stick with eight. And I think I'll put a, a mountain in the background as well. And so I'll go through and I'll say, let me put a mountain. Uh, it's not really the shape that I want, actually. Let me see if I can find a, a decent shape for the mountain. Uh, doesn't really look like I'll find it. So what I could do is I could actually just uh, do a polyline. So like that. So again, I'll change it to, I'll make it five or yeah, I'll make it four and then I will just move this back so I could actually arrange it in order and send to back. Do that and there we go. So I can just organize this a little bit better. Make these a little smaller. And what I'll do is I can have one covering the sun a little bit more like this. So it's sort of hiding in there. And I could raise this up a little bit more. Edit points, get edit the points after the fact and make it just work a little bit better. And voila, we have a, we have an image, right? And it's a nice and simple, I think I will make this eight again. There we go. Now I'll put that here, make this a little smaller, make this a little smaller. Like that. Yep, spread it out, make it look nice, and there we go. And so now what I could do is I could just download it, download it as a JPEG, and I'll just call this AR Portal Art image or drawing. Now save it and this is what it turns out to be right here. And so now that we have our drawing done, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up Unity. And so Unity is a game engine that we'll use and essentially we'll download, install and open up a new project in the Unity game engine. 
And so if you've never installed or used Unity before, this is a, the Unity Game Engine website. And so this is where you can create a whole bunch of different things for your experiences. Obviously, if you want to get started, just click Get Started. And for all that stuff, you go ahead and go to Individual and you click Personal. And with Personal, you click Get Started. And if it's a first time user, you can use, uh, you can go here. Otherwise, if you're a returning user, you go here and it pretty much allows you to download the Unity Game Engine. And so after that, you click Agree and you download. And once you download it, then it's going to allow you to open up the Unity Hub. And the Unity Hub, uh, as a brief rundown, you have your projects where all your projects are. This is the Learn tab to learn more about how to use Unity for games and a variety of different things. Tons of tutorials that are available for free. And then you have the Community tab, which gives you blogs and, and community of users. And then you have the installs. And so with the installs, this is where your Unity editor versions are. And so to add an install, you just go to add. Uh, you have, I would recommend using the recommended version or the recommended release, or you could use some uh, LTS ones, uh, the long-term support, which is also good. And then you go into, uh, you click next. Uh, if you don't have a developer tool like Visual Studio installed already, I would highly suggest clicking this. If you do, like I do already have it, then I'll, I just unclick it. But then you make sure that you have Android build support and iOS build support done. And you click next. You agree to the terms, all that stuff. Um, I accidentally decided to download a new version. Oh, well. And so um, with that, you can go through and you can create a new Unity version and or you can create a new Unity project and you want to make sure that it's a it's the 3D Unity template. And after you do that, you I'll name this AR portal. Uh, tutorial. And from there, I'll click create. And so now that we have our Unity version open, right? Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to build settings, click build settings, and want to change it to either iOS or Android build support. And so I like to use Android because it's just easier to develop with. Um, Apple has its problems, especially when you're working on a PC. And so from there, I'll go to switch platform. And then from there, what I can do is I can go to player settings and then I'll go to rendering and where it says color space, I'll have that be linear. And lastly, I'll change the quality from ultra down to medium. And that just makes it optimized for our AR experience. And so now that I have those things, a brief rundown is that like the hierarchy is where all our components are, all our different game objects, and a game object is just a container that has different components. And so you'll see that the main camera has a camera component, and then the directional light has a light component. You could literally create an empty aim object and then add components to it like this. And you could add a variety of different components to it. And that will those components are the properties of the game object. In the inspector, this is where you see all the settings and components for all your game objects. In the console, this is where you see all your errors and stuff. And then uh, in the project section, this is where all your files and assets will be. And then the difference here is that you have a scene view, which is where you navigate the scene. And then the game view is what you see in the camera. And so a good way to get a glimpse of what you see in the camera is you can click on the main camera. And what you see here is going to be the same as your game view. And so uh, the game view is what you see from the camera. And so when you click this play button here, you'll see anything from the game view. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get our AR stuff going.
So now that we have the Unity set up and we have an idea of what Unity is, now it's time to import our Vuforia Engine SDK and essentially we'll download it, import it into our Unity project and this will enable us to use the augmented reality features on a webcam. Again, there's other uh, SDKs you could use. There's AR Foundation, there's EasyAR, there's a lot of different ones. Uh, but I use Vuforia because it allows me to do stuff on a webcam so I don't have to spend time building it to a device just to test out simple features. So it's great for rapid prototyping and stuff and great for this. And so we're at the Vuforia Engine developer portal right here. And this is where you download your the latest Vuforia package. And so with it, you just go to downloads and you want to make sure to choose not Android, iOS, or UWP, but the, the one for Unity. And so when you do that, you just have to log in. Uh, the accounts are free, much like all the developer tools are. And then after that, I already downloaded it, but you just download the Unity uh, package. And then from there, you add it to your scene. So what we'll do is I will go through and I will import it. So go to import, assets, import, package, custom package. And I will go to where I downloaded my Vuforia package right here. And then I'll import it. And then you want to make sure that you have Git installed and then you click update. And so once you once it finishes downloading, the way you get test to see if it finishes if you have a, a folder called editor right here. And then if you go to window and you go to Vuforia configuration, you'll have something up here in the inspector. And so there's some settings that we want to get done right now before we move on. So the first thing is we want to add a Vuforia app license. So you can do that by going to your app licenses. I have one already for AR Comics, but you could create your own development app license right now by just going to Git Development Key and then creating one as it loads right here, and you just name it and then create it. Uh, but I already have one, so I'll just copy it. And then I will go back to Unity and I will just paste it just like that. So very simple. Um, if you don't have a license, it'll, uh, if you don't have a development license, it'll stop you from using some of the, the, the features, the AR features. And so the second thing is we want to turn off track device pose because what this does is it says that, um, when the camera, the AR camera that you have, uh, isn't looking at the image target, it'll still track it. And we don't want that. So when you, uh, when you turn this off, it'll say that when the camera doesn't see the image target, it'll stop trying to have the experience. And this is great for surface tracking where you have, so you put something on like a ground and then, uh, and then as long as you're not, if you're looking at the ground, uh, you can see it, but when you take your phone off the ground, uh, normally the device will not be able to track it, but with track device pose, it'll say that it'll keep all the ground information for you to do that with surface tracking. And that's the opposite of what we want for image tracking. So just turn this off. And lastly, if you're using a webcam, uh, make sure that it's set to webcam and then you have the right webcam. I have multiple webcams, so uh, make sure you choose the right one. And then from there, we will uh, be able to set up our image target. And so now that we have Vuforia set up, we have Unity set up, it's time to set up our image target. And so we're going to add the art into our Unity project. And we have two different, we have a drawing and then we have a portal art image that I, I chose. So we'll add the art to it and then we will test the AR features just to make sure it works. And so here we are in Unity, right? And so what I'll do is I will go through and I will go to assets and in project, I will make a new folder just to be organized and I'll call this images. And with images, I'll just open up the images and I'll take the two art pieces that I have, the drawing and the, and the image from the internet, and I'll just drag those into it. And so right now you'll see that they have really weird shapes right now. So what I could do is I could go to texture type and the inspector by selecting them 
and I'll go and change these to Sprite 2D UI. And this just says that they are images. And so now it makes them a little bit better. The next thing I'll do is I'll go to scenes because each folder, each uh, project should have a scenes folder. And I'll do is I'll create a new scene. So new scene and I'll say AR portal art like that. And after that, I'll just open it and you'll see that it changed to AR portal art in the hierarchy. So that's how you know it's a new scene. And so now it's time to set up an image target. So the first thing that we need is to replace our main camera with a AR camera. And all this is saying is that like, this is sort of a game scene camera uh, and an AR camera, which you go to right click and Vuforia engine and then AR camera. What this says is that this emulates the phone or the webcam. And so this is your phone or webcam camera and this is your uh, main camera, your game camera. So we don't need this because we're not making a game, we're making a, a AR experience. And uh, then the next thing is we want to have an image target. So just right click, and we go to Vuforia Engine, Image Target. And the image target that we want, I'll say this is um, Portal Image, like that. And I could go select it, make sure that we have image target behavior from image, and then we go to select, and we'll choose our portal image right there. So when I zoom into it, I could zoom into it by double clicking it. When I zoom into it, you'll see that this is the image that we have right here. And so now what we can do is we can create a, we could test it to see if it works. So I could do that by going to 3D object and I'll just add a cube to it. And the cube is really big as you can see here. So then I'll just make it smaller so that it appears. And then what I could do is I could just change the color of it just so it's not just a boring white cube. So I'll go to folder, create a folder, call this materials. And all materials do is they just change the color of your like basic objects. And then I'll go right click again and I'll make a material and I'll just call this red. And in the red material, I'll just change it to a red color and then I'll drag that onto my cube, like that. And I could just lift this up by going to my different lifting panels, like that. And so now I could just save it and I could test it out. And so I'll just pull up my image that I have and I have a second monitor, so I'll be able to test it out with that second monitor. And so with my webcam that I have, I look at the image it's not showing up and for good reason and so the reason it's not showing up is because we have our portal image but then we have our cube here and the reason it's not showing up is because we have to actually make the portal image a parent of the cube so when we place it as a parent the cube like that and the way you could tell is when you drag the cube over you could drag these game objects but if you drag the cube onto the portal image it creates this little arrow here and this means it's apparent uh, the cube is a child of the of the portal image and the portal image is a parent of the cube like that and so when you do that then it says that okay when you see this image you're going to activate all the stuff that's a child of it and so I'll click play again and so now here we go boom look at that like that and so now that we have that what we can do is we could actually uh, create a uh, a duplicate and set it up so before we do that what I like to do is I like to organize things a little bit better and so I'll create a new empty object as a child and I'll call this AR content. And so AR content is where I would put, you know, all my content in there. And so this is a container that just makes it easier to, to organize things. And so once I do that, I could duplicate this and I'll call this drawing image. And once I have the drawing image, 
I could actually change the drawing image to something else. So I'll just move this over so that you could see that there's multiple images here. So I'll just move this over and then I'll change this to my portal drawing like that. And I have the portal drawing actually printed out. And so it's going to be a good way to test the digital versus the, the virtual stuff in our test. And so if you have one or the other, it doesn't really matter. I'm just sort of providing options here. And so from there, I will actually change this to a, um, I'll create a new material. So I'll just duplicate this material. I'll call this one blue. And I will go like that. And I'll just drag that over there. So now I have a blue cube and a red cube. So I'll save it and then I'm going to test out my other image. And as you can see, there we go. So the first step is done. We have augmented reality. We've manifested it. And so now it's time to build on it. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we're going to build out a 3D container so that it contain the actual scene, the 3D scene that we want. And so a container, think about this as sort of like a way to provide depth and uh, look into the actual uh, art piece. And so kind of like a, like a portal or a window into a world that you can't touch, but uh, is still very much alive. And so, uh, and so we will do that. And so what I would like to do is I'll go ahead and actually rotate these images right side up and the reason I'll do that is because we typically will be looking at the images right side up we won't be looking at them flat and so being able to rotate them I'll say I'll rotate them negative negative 90 degrees uh, means that they're right side up so when I look at it from the front view this is the front view it's like they're hanging on a wall so I'll just give it a little bit more space like that. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to not sit on top of the image, but I wanted to actually be in the image, like behind the image. And uh, a perfect way to explain that is if I have this cube being back here and you're sort of seeing it in space, that would be really cool. And so we could do that with Pearl Builder. And so what I will do is I will actually just start off with just the image here and I'll say I want to create a an image that uh, with this in mind so I'll just duplicate my cube and I'll just treat this as a uh, and actually create a new game object and I'll call this the portal template and so what I'll do is I will put the cube in there and I'll have this be my, my marker. And so I could hide it, and this is my marker. And so I want the cube to actually be right here. This will be the front of it, and I'll have it be right here. And so I want to create something that has that sort of depth there, like that. And so, I'll just put this little stop sign here to, to not so I don't edit it or anything. And then what I'll do is I'll go to Windows and I'll go to Package Manager. And I want to you go to Unity Registry and go down to Pro Builder. And Pro Builder is a, a great asset that allows you to build and edit custom geometry. And so it's pretty much a 3D modeling plugin or extension like Vuforia, but for 3D modeling. And so you just go ahead and install it. It comes with Unity, so it's a, it's a great addition. And after you install it, it gives you some wonderful options. So we'll just wait for it to install. And after it's installed, there's other stuff you could use symbols and stuff like that that Unity provides um, to explore it. But what I'll do is I'll go to Tools and go to Pro Builder 
and then Pro Builder window. And what Pro Builder window is is uh, a way to use Pro Builder. So I'll just dock it to the side because that's just an easy way to, you know, organize it. And then I can go ahead and create a new shape. And so I'll go ahead and create a new shape. Boom. When I do that, it creates this big cube. And so with this big cube, I can so okay, I want this cube. Cool. I'll click build. There's a lot of stuff that you could use with it. So sprites, you could use prisms, you could use stairs, and you could edit it in a variety of different ways from this window. Uh, but it won't actually make it available until you actually uh, click build. And so when it's right now, if it's blue, it's not, it's in preview mode, as you can see. And so uh, when I click build, it goes from preview mode to uh, a cube like that. And we could change the material and stuff. So I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. But then we have our object selection, which we could select the object. We have our vertex selection to select the vertex and you can move that around. Uh, we have edge selection to select the edge and you can move that around. And then we have our face selection where you can select a face and move that around. And so right now, what I'm going to do is use object selection and I'm going to just scale it down. And I'm going to actually add it to my portal template. And so with the portal template, I want to um, actually call this one. I'll change it from cube to um, pro builder cube, at least right now, till I figure out what to what to name it. And then I will just click zero, zero, zero to just zero it out. And then after that, I'll go through. I'll just move it down a little bit more. And then I'll scoot it back. And now I want to be able to create a create a an environment or a queue that I could uh, that I could put this stuff in. So what I'm going to do is drop it down here like that, and then I'll start making it. Um, actually, just create a a material. So I'll just duplicate this material. And I'll call this material transparent. And this just allows me to um, see within the box so I can line it up better. And so then I'll make it transparent and I'll just change this to a green and I'll lower it so that it's, uh, you know, translucent. And then I'll put that on it. So now I can see my cube like that. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and turn this right here. I have my, I have my image. And so I'll just line it up with the actual image target right there. And so it's pretty much on the same plane. And then what I can do is I can select the face and I can cut this out. So I'll select this face, the front face. And then I will hit the scale tool. And if I hit shift in the scale tool, it creates a new uh, shape for me like that. So shift in the scale tool created a new face. So now I could actually move this face around and I could edit it so that it um, so that it works to my liking. So I have the portal sort of right there. I'll sort of have it overlap a little bit. And then I'll go to the edge selection and I'll just select one edge and I'll just bring it in. I'll select another edge and I'll drop that down. And I'll select this last edge and I'll just move that over. It'll overlap like that. And then I could select this face and then I could go through and I could say a delete face right here down at the bottom. Delete faces. And I'll hit that and we deleted that face. And so now what I could do is I could place my cube that I have at that cube. I could place that a little bit deeper into my scene. That would be a little bit deeper into my scene. And one thing to notice is if you have face selection and you select a, a face or a cube, that's not a pro builder cube like these, nothing will happen. 
but if you uh, if you go to object selection, it'll bring back all the all the stuff that you need. So that's just one thing to sort of pay attention to, just in case you run into that problem. And so now that I have that, I'll just sort of put this cube in there, and I have my portal template right here. So if I hide it, I can hide it or put it back there. And so now I can actually add that to my. I could save it, and I could add it to my uh, AR my AR content right there. And so I could hide this cube by selecting the cube and hiding it. And then I could actually have a, have a portal or at least a container that I could, uh, a transparent container. And so what I'll do is I will save this. And as long as it's a, a child of the uh, AR image, so I have it in my AR content container, it'll, it'll be image tracked and it'll show. And so I'll go ahead and click play. And as you can see me here, and I have my portal image, right? And so now, now with that, what we can do is we can go through and try to find a way to hide it, hide that mask. And so now with this, we have the opportunity to uh, mask out the container. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a depth mask to mask out the container. So all you see is just a window into the scene and that window or that scene will be the little window that we created by deleting that face. And so we'll use a depth mask. It's pretty, pretty simple, um, sort of a drag and drop, but, uh, but we'll do that right now. And so we're back in Unity, right? We have, our, we have our portal template, which is sort of a box that we created and we have a transparent uh, material on it. So what we could do now is we could go ahead and create and go to create new, create a new material. And we'll just call this, or we'll just call this a uh, portal mask. And so we have our portal mask and we could go up here to shader. And when we click shader, we could go to depth mask. When we select that, it's going to create a mask that hides stuff. And so a depth mask works great with, uh, with occluding or, or making things invisible when you don't want them to be. And so, uh, Anything that the, the depth mask covers uh, will be invisible. Anything that isn't covered will be able to show. And so we see that this isn't covered. And so we want this to show whatever's in here, but anything around it, when you look from any other angle, it'll, it won't show up. And so we'll just drag this portal mask over and it deletes it. Actually, it just makes it invisible. And it's like, oh snap, where did our, where did our cube go, right? And you'll see, you'll notice how there's a, there's like some transparency here. It's like it's invisible. Uh, and so if you look closer, we get closer into it. We're in the depth mask and we see our cube here. But if we go out of it, it's gone. And so now we could test it out. We'll save it. And let's test it out. Like that. And it hides when you don't see it anymore. When I turn to the side, it hides it out. Like that. So it's very simple. It's a very simple approach and technique. And that's one of the reasons why I create a, a portal template first, because it's really difficult to see this right now. But if I go through and I remove it, uh, and I hide the drawing image, I could actually see it now, like that. And so now, now that we have our Unity set up, we have the picture frame, we have it working in AR, now it's time to build out an environment. And this is where it gets really, really fun. And so what we'll do is build out an environment, and then from that environment, you'll be able to create some, some very interesting scenes for your stuff. And so we'll first start off with polybrush and then use that to uh, really set the scene and set the tone. And so with our environment done, or with our stuff done, our portal done, uh, what we can do is I could actually take the picture frame and take this whole portal template and just move this out. And by moving this out, I'm able to hide, the, hide all the stuff. And I could actually 
add the template transparency in there so that I see the bounding box that I'm working with. And so from there, I know exactly the amount of space that I have and how I can work with it. So what I'll do is I'll save it first, then I'll go to Window, Package Manager, and we did Pro Builder at first, now it's time to use Polybrush. And Polybrush is another asset. This one allows you to do landscaping and scattering and a whole bunch of different things with the Unity tools. And so, uh, and so we'll go ahead and install that. And so now that it's done, again, you can use the samples that are available. And if you don't want to, you don't need to, but we'll head over and we'll go to tools and we'll go to polybrush. We'll go polybrush window. And that polybrush window, I typically like to dock it under my pro builder window just because they sort of are two peas in a pod essentially. And so what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll say, hey, I have I need a um a landscape. And so with that, I'll go through and I can create a new shape. So I'll create a new shape. I'll just create a new plane. Right here, I'll look for my planes. With my planes, I want to, that's my plane preview. I want the plane. So I got my plane. And I want the segments to be I want there to be a lot of a lot of segments so I'll do a 10 by 10 and then I'll have we'll say 20 segments on each just like that. I'll just click build. And typically I like to have a lot of segments because it gives you a lot to a lot to maneuver and sculpt with. And so from there, I have my uh, poly brush and I could lower it down, make it smaller. And I could put that in my portal template and I could just zero it out so that it goes to the spot that I want it to be in and it doesn't work. Just add that there. And so I'll go through and just lower this down. I'll just make this a the ground and I kind of want to make sure everything is within the bounds and so I could just move this in here move this forward this is hanging out the back so I can move this in more. And it pretty much fits in. Fits within the bounds, essentially. Nice. So if it fits within the bounds, cool. And so what I could do is I could take this plane and I could just duplicate it so I could rotate it around the X. So negative 90. And I could have this be my back plate. I'll just scoot that back here. And then I get duplicate it again, this time on the Y, negative 90. And I could create a side panel 
like that. I'll just move this in a little bit more. And then I could create a, another side panel by just duplicate, duplicating that and rotate, making that 90 degrees. And then obviously moving it in and moving it back that way. And so last but not least, I could duplicate the bottom one and then I could rotate that along the the Z axis, I believe. No, I could do that around the X axis too. I'll say 180. I'll just line that back up and I could move that up here like that. So now when we look at it, we have a lot of stuff, right? And so after I do that, I could create a material and I'll just have this be a sky material. So I'll just call it sky. And that sky material, I'll make, you know, like a light blue or something. And I could add that to the back there. I could add that to that side, to that side, and to that side right there. And it seems like there's a little bit of an imperfection. There's a little bit of space. I'll just cover that space right there. And we're golden. Just like that. Another thing I could do is I could make it an unlit material. And if I make it an unlit material, notice how there's no edges now. So that's a that's a great way to make it uh make it really stand out. And so after that, right, I'll just call this uh ground. And I could bring this out of my portal and I could actually hide everything else. Like my picture frame and everything, I could hide it and uh and I could actually go to work on on making this look pretty decent. And so I'll save it. And then I'll go to the sculpt mesh tool right here. And what I can do is I can make the outer radius smaller and the inner radius smaller. And actually I can make it really, really small for both of these. Make it really small and then lower the strength. And what this will do is it'll sculpt out a mesh. And so I could have different things right here like mountains and stuff. But I actually might want to stick to my actual image target. A little bit more and so I'll just lower the strength and what I'll do is I'll say uh, ignore open edges and what that means is it's not going to uh, it's not going to do anything to the edges that we have so if I unclick that see how the edges come up I don't want that I want everything to be straight uh, you know locked down so I'll do that and then again I'll just lower that lower that Lower that to make it really small. Uh, just make the outer radius actually a little bit bigger. The inner radius smaller, like that. And I could go through and I could just, I'll first make some, make a mound. Like increase the elevation, like that. That's how I had it before. And then afterwards, I could bump it up a little bit. I can make it a little smaller. When you're working at this small scale, it does present some problems. Make it a little smaller. I could essentially bump up the strength. And the strength that'll allow me to add some some mountains to it. So I'll add some mountains.
and you essentially just sculpt it just like that. Just like that. So if I try to look through the portal, I actually have enough room to do a whole lot more with it. So then what I could do is I could go through and just add more space to it. Don't want it to protrude out as much. So I just want to go up. And people won't really see that at the bottom, so I'm, I should be good. And you could get very creative with this. Uh, there's a lot of interesting geometry stuff you could do with Polybrush. And so now, now that I'm done with that, I could go through, I could smooth the mesh out. I could lower it and make it a little bit uh, manageable. Smooth out the edges. As you can see here, sort of smooth this out. Go back here, smooth that out. Since it's all protruding out a little bit more, smooth this out as well. smoothing doesn't need to chew it out as much like that and then I could go through and I could paint it and so painting it that's it's a really interesting one uh, what I'll need to do first is I'll need to first uh, right now I can't paint it until I add a polybrush material actually we'll have to go to polybrush or Windows package manager and then we'll do a shader examples. And so we'll import that. And then after you import it, we'll have some samples here. We'll go to Polybrush, 1.2 shader examples, like that. Go to shaders, and we have our standard shaders here that we could use. And so after we do that, we go back to our materials, we'll go to Polybrush, then we go to standard, and we'll have Polybrush here. And then we'll have a uh, standard vertex color. And so right there, I'll go ahead, add that to my thing. And then now what I could do is I could just start coloring it. So I'll just hide the polybrush template. I have this material here. And so I'll just say, hey, let me just try this material, uh, this green color. I want this green color. So with this green color, we just go through and I can just color it. And so right now the strength is very low and so I'll increase the strength to one and you'll see I'm able to color all of my stuff, right? But what if I want to fill the whole thing, right? I could do that by just hitting fill and then hitting the colors just like that. If I want to flood, I get flooded by just hitting flood and just doing the whole thing. And so now everything is green. And so then I could go through and I could say, hey, let me change this to my mountains. And the mountains will be sort of a, a purpley. I could do that. And so I could do that by going to the brush. And then I could just start coloring the mountains. Different color. Right? And so now, what if I wanted to give it just like a white cap? I could do that by just adding a white cap to the top of it. And if I wanted to make it just a little bit darker in some areas, I could do that as well. So I could just make it darker in a little bit of areas by just clicking, doing that. If I want to add a little bit of dirt to the underground, I could add a little bit of dirt to it. So giving a little bit of dirt texture to it. Like that. And so now I have my environment, pretty much. 
And so now with that environment, I could save it. I can make everything visible again. I could go add the ground back to my cube. And I could actually move the cube up a little further so that it's in the scene a little bit more. So we have a sky, we have an environment built in Polybrush, and we have the AR stuff. And so now what I'll do is I'll take that portal template, I'll add it to my AR content again, and I'll take that portal mask and I'll just use that and put that back on the portal template. And so now we have a little portal art thing. So let me click the play button and let's test it. As you can see there, we have a sky with an environment. Nice. And so now that we have our depth mask, uh, an activity that we could do is we could make a picture frame. And so we have a, we know that this is picture art already, and we want it to really augment in a whole bunch of different ways. The easiest way is just adding a picture frame to it and then possibly just giving it a different color. Uh, that's, a, that's a very easy way to uh, really make things pop. And so uh, go ahead and use Pro Builder to create a picture frame border around your art piece and then align it to the art so that it looks like the picture frame is attached to the art. And we'll go ahead and do that. And so here we are, we have our Porto Art picture frame. Uh, what I'll do is I will go ahead and choose um, a new shape like that. And I'll just create a, another cube. And so I'll just click build. And then I'll get out of my window so I get rid of that preview. And then what I'll do is I'll actually just make it skinnier. We don't need it that long or wide. I'll just make it smaller in general. Um, just so it's the, the right size that we need. Boom, boom with the scale tool. And then I'll just go ahead and align it the way I did before. So going through and zero, 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 just to start off. And then I'll bring it down here. Again, I can make it transparent again, so that just makes it easier to, to maneuver. And then I'll lower it, scale it. Like so. And so if I want to make it a little easier, I could just go through and I could just move, use the face selection, and I could just make it a little easier to navigate like that. And it's good to try to, uh, I'll select the whole object, and it's good to try to get a little bit of it inside there like that. Perfect. And so now what I can do is I could select the... Uh, and, I'll, and I'll call this picture frame. And so what I could do is I could do this face selection tool and I could select that face and I could select, uh, not that, we want the actual picture frame. So I'll select the face of the picture frame and I'll just make this an individual object because I know where it's at now. So I'll take that and then I'll select this face right here yeah, so select that face, select that face. So I have both faces selected. And then I will just bring back this, this image again. And I will change to the scale tool and I'll hold shift. And that shift will allow me to create a different, uh, create an opening like that. And so what I'll do is I will just lower it a little bit. I'll bring it down to here. I'll just try to align both of them 
so that they fit in the spot that I want them to fit in. Like that. I'll just make it a little smaller. Pro Builder just makes things a little easier. And I guess I'll make it a little wider. And so last but not least, what I could do is I could move it back. So I'll select this image right here. I'll hold shift and I'll just push it back like that. And so I could hide the image just to see how far I got. And it looks like it's a little too far. So then I'll just bring it back to about here. And so now it has some depth and I could go ahead and delete the face. So now that I have the face deleted, I have get creator, I could do it again like this, and I can just delete that face as well. Boom. So now there's a hole there. Just like that. And so now I could give it a red material. So now that material is a hole. And so when I turn it back on, turn on the drawing, I have a picture frame. Like that. And so I'll add the picture frame to the portal template. And then I'll save it. And I'll test it out. There we go. Boom. And we have the picture frame. And so it's like... The picture frame is sitting on the art piece, just like that. So anything within the picture frame you can see, anything outside the picture frame you can't. Just like that. And so now that we have the environment with Polybrush, we have our mask and our container with Pro Builder, it's time to start adding more assets to this. And so now this is what we call kit bashing, where you use assets from a Unity asset store, or anything on the internet to uh, add more details to your scene. And so we could add clouds, we could add a sun, we could add uh, grass, we could add trees, we could even add animals. Uh, so let's go ahead and explore the asset store, uh, see what stuff we could find to put in our scenes, and let's add that to our scenes. And so we have everything that we did, right? We have all the stuff that we have been working on and creating. So now let's actually hide our, our drawing and let's actually hide everything except for our, our container. So what I'll do is I'll actually say probator cube. We have our ground. I'll just make everything a child of the ground that is involved in our scene like that. And I'll just have that be out. So this is the container that we have, right? So now let's start looking for stuff on the NAV asset store. So you go to the asset store here, or you can go to window, and you go to asset store, it'll open this up, and you just click that button to search online. And then from there, we could look for some assets. So I'll just call nature. And so as we look for some, uh, some stuff, we go to free, and we have this thing called a simple nature pack right here. Simple low poly nature pack. And so I like that. And so what I'll do is I will actually choose this one right here. Simple low poly nature. We have some rocks and some flowers and all that good jazz. So then I'll just add to my assets. I'll click accept and I'll click open in Unity. I'll just the uh, Unity editor. Go to our package manager and it allows us to add the stuff in. So we'll just click download. And then I'll click import. 
import that. And so now we can go back to our scene. We have our ground. I can just create a new uh, empty and have this be uh, 3D objects. Like that. And I could have this be just in the center. So I'll just move this up to the center right here. And that just gives me a little, uh, a good root for everything. And so now, go back to my assets. I could go to where it's a simple nature. And from simple nature, I could go to prefabs. Prefabs are the best things to use. And then I could add some trees. I could add some branches and logs and rocks and stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go through. I'll add a tree. And that's a huge tree. So let me just make that just smaller. And so I'll say, okay, I got one tree in here. I can move it around, move it to the back. I could duplicate it. Have another tree that is in the ground. Duplicate it again. Get out of another tree that's not in the ground, but you know, back there. Maybe I'll add some bushes. And so I have some bushes around the trees. Like that. And then we'll do something like that. And maybe we'll just add another one back here, like that. So we'll add bushes there. And, yeah, I suppose I could add some bushes here too. Just duplicate it. Like that, right? I could add some rocks. Again, rocks are huge. I'll just have a rock here. And then I could add another rock. Three objects here. Some reason that one is huge. And so I'm just now noticing that the rocks and stuff, the rocks and the trees were not going into my 3D objects here, so I'll just drag them over. Like that. Same thing with these. I'll drag those over here. Boom. So now I have a little bit more of a, a scene that has a lot more stuff in it. Uh, one thing is that, you know, I mentioned grass, right? And so what I could do with poly brushes, I could actually add grass prefabs here, add some prefabs, and I could actually brush those on here, which is actually really interesting. So I could actually paint on different prefabs. And so what I'll do is I'll do that with uh, my prefabs, where I will select items from the palette below so it says drag some prefabs here, boom. And I could add those in there. And then after I do that, I can figure out what the, the pivot is and all that. And I could go there. And it looks like it's a little too big. So then I could make it smaller.
as you can see, it, it is giving me a little bit of an issue right now, unfortunately. And I think it's because I have, this is so small. I lowered it before I had the opportunity to, um, I just made it just really, really small. I made the, I made my canvas a little smaller. So now when I do it, it's going to make the objects really big. As you can see, it's working, but it's, it's making it a little too big for my, for my taste. And so what I'll do is I'll just make these smaller and I'll just add them to my ground. I'll just say zero, zero, zero. Yeah, it does. Well, that you get the gist of it. Uh, Polybrush works. Um, you'll just have to plan it out a little bit better when it comes to this. But if all else fails, you just add your grass to add your grass textures, and then from there you can just make them smaller so that they fit, and then you just start adding them to your scene like this. So I'll add these. At this, at this, add some more grass textures. Like that. And I'll add another one. Just copy this one and add this one to the back here. Like that. Um, and I could add a mushroom. I mean, we all love mushrooms. Might as well add a mushroom to it. I'll just scale it down. And I'll add that mushroom in the center. Might as well. like that and so I'll go ahead boom 3d objects add those to my 3d objects folder and so when I hide it I can hide it makes things easier to organize and I have my stuff so now I have my ground and so I could add that back to my uh, portal template I could hide everything and reshow it. Then I'll click save and I'll click play. And we'll test it out. Just like that. We got the cube and we have our nature scene. And so now, time for activity three. And it's really all about expanding on it, right? And so we could add sounds, we could add animation, we could add particle effects to really make it more immersive. Uh, and so we have the foundations of what we already created. And so now it's time to build on what we already had. So I'm back on the asset store, right? And I did see some other stuff that I wanted to add to it. So I saw this simplistic low poly nature. And I thought this was really, really cool. Some extra stuff to include into it especially these like this turtle and these birds and stuff. So I decided to add that to my assets. So I'll just add that to my assets and then I'll open in unity and I'll go there. Secondly, I kind of want to find some clouds. And so I'll look for some clouds. And with those clouds, I'll choose free assets. And then I have what says low poly cloud pack. Think that works. Or we have this low poly fantasy clouds. Hmm. Looks interesting. Yeah, I have a, I have a lot to choose from. 
So what I'll do is I'll I'll choose this uh Hmm, this looks really cool. So yeah, I'll choose this one, this low poly cloud pack. This looks really, really cool. And so I'll add that, I'll open it. Boop, boop. I'll just click download. And then I'll click import. I'll import that. And then I believe I imported this, did I? Nope, I didn't. So simplistic low poly nature. And then what I could do is I could look for some nature sounds. And there's some free nature sounds here. So I'll go ahead and get some free nature sounds. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. And this looks like a huge package, but we'll see how it goes. So get some nature sounds. I'll click download. It'll just take a little while to download. And I'll click import. And of course I will do only the nature stuff though, that's all I really want. So I don't want all of this stuff, uh, weapons, no. All I want is, I don't want any scenes. And it's the great about this is you could choose the stuff that you want to import in. And so I really just want, got rain, lightning, I'll just click none and then I'll choose a jungle right there. I'll choose some jungle tracks. And so I'll click uh, import. And once it finishes importing, I have all, my, all the stuff that I need. And so with it, I have a, some new packs. So I have the jungle here, so I could preview these. Yeah, these are pretty good. And so to add that, what I'll do is I'll go to my portal template and I'll click create empty and I'll call this audio manager. And this is just an empty manager for my, uh, to control the sounds. And I can go to add component, I type in audio and I'll do audio source right there. And so with the audio source, what I wanna do is I'll just add a sound. So I could say, oh, I want the sound, the jungle five. I'll go to my audio manager and I can just drag that into the audio clip. And what I'll do is I'll turn off play on awake and I can actually control it by having the image target control it. So what that does is it says uh, when the image target is found, it'll play the song. And then when it's lost, it'll stop playing the song. And I could do that here where we go to image target or however your image target is named. We have on target found and we'll click the plus sign and we'll add our audio manager in there. And then we'll hit function, audio source, and we'll say play. And that'll play the audio source that we added here. So they'll play this audio clip. And so then I go back to it and I say, when it's lost, I'll add the audio manager again and I'll click audio source and I'll click pause. And that says that when it's not looking at the, when it's not looking at it, it'll pause it. And so now, we have, we have that working. And so the second thing that we could do is go back to our, take the ground, take our ground out of this and, and unhide it. And I could add some more stuff to it. So I would just want to add those clouds because I think the clouds will be really, really great. And so add some clouds and then I'll add some other stuff. There you go. So we'll put our clouds in here. 
and then I'll add some animals at the end. So add these clouds here. Then I'll add probably some more clouds here. I'll just make it smaller. Ooh, that is some detailed clouds right there. So this gives me a good look at it. Yep. Boom. So I have some clouds. And I'll make this a little bit. I'll rotate these a little bit. And I'll make it a little smaller. And I'll have it sort of fit back here. I'll move it forward a little bit more. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll add some animals. So get some prefabs. Not those. Animators. Ooh, so I can get some animated birds, huh? We have a butterfly, we have birds. So we'll try to re-import these. Doesn't look like I will be able to. Let's see what happens if I just throw it in here. Character is a bird. Boom. Squirrel and tortoise. So each one of these are hidden. Just add these back in there and I can make them smaller, obviously. And then from there, I'll just place my, my turtle guy on the mound and make him a little smaller too. Like that, and then I'll have my bird. Like that, I got a butterfly, it's a huge butterfly. But no matter. Got the butterfly. Like that. And I got my squirrel. Squirrel will make a little smaller. And I'll move this over. I have him working in the background. On the ground. Like that. So apparently there's some animators that we could use. And so there's an animator for the bird, the squirrel. So I'll have the squirrel. So I'll just add the animator there. And then for my butterfly, got the butterfly animator. Got the squirrel, got the turtle, got that one. And then we have our, our bird. Our bird has an animator for that. And so they came with the animators, which is pretty cool. 
And in order to figure out how to use the animator, you just go to animation and then animator and it'll have birds flapping. That's cool. We got a butterfly flapping. We got squirrel eating. We got turtle idling. So it's some simple animation. If we wanted to preview that, there's a way to preview it. We're looking here. At them just moving around. Just like that. So now that we got that taken care of, we get everything sort of moving around. And so I'll make sure to add these objects to my ground scene for 3D objects, like so. And then I'll add the 3D objects or the ground scene all together back to my portal, like that. I'll save it, hide and unhide it again and then I'll test it out. And so again, I forgot to get that cube out of the way. So I'll remove the cube and now let's test it out. And so you'll notice how the sound doesn't play. And that's what we got. So we turned an image, right? We turned a, a very simple image that we had. We had this image and we turned it into a masterpiece. And so uh, if you had another image, if you had something that's a little more robust, you could use that as well. I think the beauty of image targets is that it allows for you to do a lot of amazing things. But we started from those images and we're able to create this, this interesting uh, environment right here and then from there we were able to combine it with sound and augment it and so we've come a long way from the beginning of this course right and so we were able to find an image to augment and in many ways we just created our own image and then we we're able to set up unity we imported the Vuforia SDK we set up an augmented reality image target we built the 3d objects with pro builder we created a portal with a depth mask. We uh, kit bashed some assets and designed a 3D scene. And we explored techniques to make art more immersive. Uh, this was a, a long journey. You know, we got to play around with a variety of different things like PolyBrush and ProBuilder. And we got to uh, just see a lot of stuff that we probably just never got introduced to in this way, shape, and form. And so hopefully this really give you a, a good glimpse of what augmented reality can do in the art space and how you could create more immersive work that incorporates sound and tactiles and tactile input and also visuals in motion. Uh, I think there's an opportunity with this in the AR space now that it's more accessible and you're able to create stuff for a lot of different devices and for a lot of different um, experiences. And so again, my name is Steven Christian. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little brief glimpse of how to create immersive art with portals and, uh, and simple illustrations and even phot photography and images. And hopefully you could use Unity and you could use all the tools that are available with Vuforia and a webcam to really create some very interesting things that, um, that really speak to the innovations that are available and at our fingertips. Again, it's a it's all about creating 
uh, taking ideas and then finding ways to use technology to enhance those ideas and then provide for very meaningful and impactful experiences. And so with that, my name is Steven Christian. Again, I'm an immersive artist and I create comics and cartoons that really pop off the page and come to life. And uh, I use these as educational opportunities to expose people to the process that I use to create my work and then hopefully inspire you to create more work yourself. And so with that, I hope to see you in another uh, rundown of tutorials with uh, a lot of the other stuff that I have uh, out and planned. And again, you know, it's been it's been a fun ride. And so with that, be safe, keep creating and I look forward to seeing all the stuff that you're able to, to come up with and share.